having a relaxed start to today's vlog. I wasn't even going to get up to be honest. I was going to do it tomorrow and then I saw the sun. So a slightly different vlog today. Instead of rushing around panicking and worrying about the light and the sun and what have you, and trying to grab as many photographs as I can on the way around, I've got a specific point in sight. The sun's shining, it looks like it's got no hope of going away, so that's good. I'm in King Stanley, which is a, a village, small town, whatever, not far away from Stroud. My aim is to go to a place called Ebley Mill. Um, looks pretty attractive. Looks like it's got a, a river by it as well, which I guess most mills have. And there should be some reflection shots uh, given the sun today, but we'll see. According to my trusty instructions, there's a path just here. So. I don't think you ever would have found this without a map. It's well hidden. So if I do see anything else on the way around, I'll try and take you through what goes through my head, so what I think makes a good image. Wherever you go in the Cotswolds, you're never that far away from the Cotswold Way. I don't know if you watch any of my other videos, but Cotswold Way goes from Chipping Camden to Bath, about 110 miles, something like that. I probably will do it one of these days before I get old and fragile. One thing I found, I don't know if you've noticed, that if you're wearing sunglasses, it's quite hard to spot a composition because obviously the sunglasses take the glare off and give it a completely different contrast. So, uh, a bit like Eric Morecambe, I guess. This has got half the makings of a decent shot. If you have a look, you've got flowers in the foreground. The mill is just popping up behind. And we've got hills and clouds, but if you look at the foreground, it's a right mess. So, unless you want to spend hours in Photoshop, I think I'll leave that one. That there mill that we were just looking at, Stanley Mill, has an uh, entry in the Doomsday Book. So it's been making cloth since, well, I don't even know when the Doomsday Book was written, but obviously a long time ago. So cracking clouds around again. Yeah, it's a feature of the Cotswolds because it's in a bowl, I guess, um, with its own little hills and I'm not sure they're mountains, but it seems to attract a lot of fluffy like cotton wool clouds. I'll have to see if we can get some of them in a photo.
really seems to me that I'll probably make a decent image if I can get it lined up. I don't know if you saw there, but there are two clouds, one above each other, and then we've got the chimney over the mill. If I can get those lined up, that should work. Right, let's set up and take this shot then. The sun is illuminating the chimney and part of the brickwork underneath as well, and we've got cracking clouds, so hopefully, fingers crossed, the sun will stay out and that'll be a decent shot. So I'm doing this handheld, even at F11, we're on was at one two thousandth of a second. There's no point getting the tripod up. I don't want to catch the clouds drifting over. There's no kind of long exposure. And if we do, it'd be too bright anyway. So I'm just going to do it handheld. As I said, F11. I just want to wait for a decent cloud to come along behind the chimney. So it really is the sky that's going to make this one. I've cropped in right close because otherwise there's too much there's too much clutter in the front. There's a house over there which is distracting. So basically, I've focused in on the part of the, the mill that's sticking out and the chimney and then getting the clouds in the background. So what I've also done now is I've switched over to my long lens hopefully get a bit of compression and uh, maybe zoom in, well obviously zoom in on the on the chimney a bit more and see what that comes out like. <laughs> I made a right rookie mistake then. I don't know if you heard, but I said, even at F11, I've got a two thousandth of a second. It did seem quite high, even though it's bright and sunny. So I looked at my settings and I was on auto ISO. So the ISO was 800. So uh, I was there a little bit longer than I expected because I set it back down to 100 and took some more photographs. But at 800, it shouldn't make too much difference, but still a silly mistake. You should see the palaver of getting through some of those stars with a camera bag on your back and your camera sticking out the front. So this is the side of the old mill, Stanley Mill. Uh, I guess it was probably quiet and serene back in the day, but as you're here today, it's right by the road. So I'm not entirely sure whether I'm supposed to be in here or not, but there's no one here, so... And it does look quite dramatic. I don't know how old it looks, but to me it looks, I don't know, Georgian maybe, a bit older than that, Vict certainly Victorian. a couple of handheld shots then but the problem is we're underneath we're actually quite close the chimney to get any kind of decent shot is on the edge of the frame therefore more more tendency to bend hopefully we can sort that out in Photoshop but uh, we'll see how that comes out a bit more of a snapshot really than anything else a bit of a clue although as I said it's been here there's been a mill here since well I don't know a thousand years I guess some of these art buildings are probably new I think I better get out of here now
Well, this is fairly pretty. Some rowing boats. Obviously, the sun is shining on the. Actually, it's reflecting on the underneath of the bridge as well. So, oh. let's see what we can find composition-wise. So, I took a couple of shots there. Um, you're in the wrong position, really, without a drone to get into the middle of the river. Then uh, it didn't really come together. The balance didn't seem right. So, what I'm going to do is walk around the other side, get the bridge with the sun on it, and see if I can get the at least one of the rowing boats in the arch underneath the bridge. That looks better. There's even a bench on the left hand side to give it a bit more balance. So I'll get my tripod out and take this shot. So I took a couple of images there from different perspectives. The only thing I don't like is we've got this massive lead of towpath and it kind of distracts the eye and I can't see any way to get over it. I've been up there, stood next to the dog poo bed, which is a bit fragrant. And I've also been under the arch. Uh, we'll have to see which one comes out. So in theory, it's a cracking view. In fact, one of the locals just came past and said, wouldn't that make a glorious photograph? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I've got the locals uh, stamp of approval, but I, I don't know. It's just this big, bright bit of towpath. So. We'll see, maybe some creative cropping needed. I've absolutely got to get a move on now. This has taken me about an hour to do a mile. I didn't realise it was going to be quite so pretty. I guess when the sun comes out it makes everything a hell of a lot more attractive. Well, uh, apart from me. <laughs> the landscapes anyway and the, the surrounding architecture. One thing you didn't see was I dropped my camera on the floor while I was setting up for that shot on the bridge, which is slightly annoying. I am looking for an excuse to buy a, a mirrorless, but dropping my camera and smashing it was not one of the excuses. That's a pretty ins impressive set of, I don't even know what they are, sluice gates, I suppose. There's no photograph to be taken there, but it looks pretty good. down this canal path I'm looking for things that stand out I mean it's pretty as it is but it's very green even the water's green I don't know if it's naturally green or it's just reflecting the colour of the trees but it's green anyway everything's green so uh, yeah there's features like bridges and locks there is a lock just coming up down here again it's which side of the lock I want to take a photograph of is this side try and get a reflection I'll get around the other side where the sun is and again, somebody's very nicely parked a boat up by the side of it. <laughs> I don't know whether they've done this on purpose to make them photogenic. Well, there just has to be something here. There's a an old barge on the left. There's a not really a waterfall, but there's a flow of water on the left, and then the locks are in the background. So I've got to find a composition here. I'm not going to take any photographs of the locks. I've taken photographs of locks before and they look great but they don't come out very well in photographs so I'm not going to waste the time. So why don't I stay at the very outside of this vlog. I said I wasn't going to stop and take photographs on the way I was just going to head for the mill and take a reflection shot. Oh! Now I'm in a hurry. I was trying not to be in a hurry. I was trying to just take it easy and relax. Stop me now. So 
those snow symbols are to show the fact that they've been making snow for um, films, so things like Harry Potter in the old mill now. So Ebley Mill is now coming to view. It's pretty impressive to be honest. So, uh, however, bear in mind I want that reflection shot, I'm going to have to find somewhere to set up. So as luck would have it, as soon as I got here, the wind picks up, so it's blowing, blowing the top of the canal, making it quite difficult. So I've employed every trick that I know. I've got a polarizer on to darken the water, to try and bring the image out, and I've put a 10 stop neutral density filter on as well to take a 30 second shot again to, to calm the water out. And try and get that shot. Now I'm going to wait for the sun and for the wind to drop, and then fingers crossed. So that was proving an incredibly difficult shot to take. When I put it on long exposure, it was coming out blurry, so I don't know whether it's because I was oh, I was on that barge and the barge was wobbling around in the wind and the on the water. I don't know, but I'm gonna try and find a more stable platform and try it. I'm just hoping when I've dropped my camera I haven't broken the inbuilt stabilization, otherwise uh, that's a completely different story. So I think I managed to get the shot that I actually came for now. I propped myself up on that bridge, which is a fairly stable platform, as opposed to this barge, which I thought was stable. Obviously it was gently wallowing up and down in the water. So that's definitely a lesson learned. <laughs> if a situation ever arises again, and you happen to be stood on a barge in the middle of the river trying to take a photograph, remember that you're not to do a long exposure. This is where I was stood, look. looks stable enough. Anyway, not entirely sure that I got the sun on the mill because I was in a hurry. I'm probably going to have to come back and do it again. But with all the look, I definitely got a shot of the mill and the reflection, which is what I came for. So now, I'm going to go back to the car. Hopefully I enjoyed that. Hopefully I enjoyed that journey. It wasn't exactly what I set out to do and it wasn't as quite as relaxed as, as the first few seconds of the video made out. So if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. If you've got anything to say, leave a comment. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. All right, till next time. Bye.